participants. Over to Bharti Man. Good morning, everyone. I can see around 155 participants. And uh, this is a training program on development of e-content and e-resources, which has proven its significance, especially during the pandemics that we have all seen, when we were forced to convert the schools from offline mode to online mode. And we all have learned the nitty gritties of online education via hands-on circumstances that we were thrown into due to pandemic. So this is the third phase, Nidhi, I'm right that this is the third phase of the training. And we have divided the entire country into various zones. And this is the third phase wherein we have collated all the northeastern zones plus two more states who will be participating in this training program and we will be learning many things like how to prepare quizzes using Quizlet. Maybe we will be using Cohort also. We'll be using the pre-production initiatives or pre-production activity, indulging into pre-production activities like scripting and then how to make all the resources that we have developed, how to make them accessible. And the significance of such kind of a trend needs to be emphasized, re-emphasized, and needs to be given a fresh, fresh look, fresh thinking, fresh opinion, because lots and lots of states are requested to create their own content using the local specific curricular area in your own language is available on Diksha platform. So looking forward to this a highly productive training session and maybe at the end of the fire or on the fifth day, by the time we reach valedictory, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that I'll have some interesting programs and ideas already prepared with the help of the team CIT, which comprises of Nidhi Adlakha, which comprises of Dr. Monica, which has Dr. Gulshan, Dr. Prachi, Dr. Pinky, and others also whose name right now are not coming to me because the list is not handy in my hands, but everyone is there. And in participants list, I can see many familiar names, one of them being Dr. Hilol Mukherjee. Dr. Hilol Mukherjee, can we have a... just unmute? Good morning, so madam. And you can say hello, Hilolji. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, madam. Thank you very much. Okay. I have seen your name there. So um, I was very excited. Not... Great. So the whole yeah. to have every support. So he tell me what are your, your experience in this program? What no, I'm not being able to looking? hear you, madam. Okay. My technical so I am audible now. Yeah, yeah. Your slide is your screen is frozen. Yeah. So he also anything that you are looking forward to learning from this uh, five days. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, actually, uh, when I have heard about this, so uh, though, yeah, definitely we have a little bit of knowledge regarding uh, content creation, but about e-content creation, actually we don't have that much of knowledge. I'm looking forward to know about it, how we can develop it, and it will help us in our knowledge too, so that we can develop our uh, be it content material uh, along with some other uh, works too um, in, in e-format uh, e that will help us a lot. Thank you, madam. Okay. Hello, your voice. 
this is breaking is it for me only for everybody else i don't know and i see no doctor doctor hello, hello, rather, rather your voice is breaking hello ma'am hello yes am i audible am i audible yes yes, yes you are audible I, I, hello ma'am i am patto sir i am patto sir te goes from uh, tripura i se kon jabar agartala uh, am i audible now will uh, sir actually ma'am i think connectivity at your end is slightly low so because oh, of that you are okay, not audible here and your voice is also, also breaking also ma'am we are we, we are from tripura not this part right sir right right and i can see many smiling faces also among the participants so let me um, finish by just saying that we will be meeting tomorrow today itself once again in another session and somebody is saying ki bharti ma'am's voice is not clear so i accept that there might be network connectivity issue at my end so i'm keeping my finger Fingers crossed. By the time my session comes around two two thirty, we'll have better network connectivity at my end. And um, while you are designing the e-content, while you are thinking about how to make the e-content, kindly think about the issues related to accessibilities. Because many a times we assume that okay, let's create the videos and audios first. later on we will think about adding accessibility features or making trying to make it for everyone so that should not be the case all our e content should be accessible for all and now i can see the hand raised by gavi tamut gavi ji you want to say something Okay, over to Dr. Monica. Jump sheet, jump sheet. Jada na. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I would like to ask whether Rajol sir is in the meeting. Dr. Rajol, are you in the meeting? Yes, yes, Dr. Nidhi, I am there very much. Okay, sir. I am there so, from beginning, yeah. I would like to welcome Dr. Rajol Kareem, who is working as assistant professor in CIT and CRT. So, sir is going to give you background of the program. So, over to Dr. Rajol Kareem. Thank you, and I'm sorry, like I have to I have to join while traveling, so I'm traveling, and I hope my network supports. So, without sharing, let me just give a brief overview before I hand it over to you guys. Take it further. So, thank you, Dr. Varki, for the warm welcome of the participants. And uh, having said that, uh, as you know, uh, first of all, congratulations to all the one fifty plus odd participants from the states of northeast, as well as uh, I believe uh, participants from Kerala as well as Lakshadweep, right, joining in this session, this five day program. So, I welcome you all on this uh, five day program, and I hope. Uh, Uh, at the end of uh, five day, you take with certain things which you can try and implement uh, at your level. And uh, so, this five day session. Let me be very clear that, or uh, let us all be very clear that this is not a very exhaustive program because uh, when we say e content, so there are huge gamut of activities that we need to do. We can do in the name of e content or in the area of e. -content. but since everything can't be covered in one phase and uh, so the idea was like can we identify state resource groups can we orient them with a first level overview so that they get a pulse of the things and then they will, will some of them will have their own interest and they will gradually pick up because uh, as you know to have in and out of development of e content you need to have thorough hands on experience and sessions with all the variety of tools similarly you need to understand the pedagogical aspects of 
key content, two key content works in what scenario. And uh, as Dr. Varki said, we need to also take care of concerns of children with special needs. Like if I am making a video, if I am making a PDF file, can a blind person who will be coming to uh, visit this website or this portal through a screen reading software, can his or her software read it, right? And there are many other challenges also, right? So the color contrast that I'm using in my content, whether they are good enough or not, just an example. So there are various things that we need to consider while working on e-content. But as I said, this five day is planned to give a brief overview of the kind of things that we need to consider while working on e-content. Right, or even while planning further sessions at our respective state levels for e content development. Okay, so as you know, uh, we will try to start with uh, digital resources. If you see the post inaugural session today itself, the second session itself says digital resources of teaching learning and assessment types and formats. So, Dr. Prachi is going to discuss what are the different types of digital resources, what are their formats. What are the digital resources for teaching, learning, and what's the kind of digital resources that we can use or are available at our disposal for assessment also, right? Then this is followed by the session on accessible digital content. Accessibility, not the content. Just a moment, please. Huh? Sorry. So, just So I, I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay, sorry, sorry for going As I was, I was talking, the third session will be on accessibility in the context of digital education. And then we will shift our focus on the instructional design aspect. Like when you think about designing the e-content, so what are the things you need to consider from an instructional design point of view? How do you design the blue script? Uh, how, how, how do you design uh, the scripts? How do, you, how do you validate it? How do you verify it? And then how do you plan your production? How do you, add, how do you verify it? How do you preview it? And all the rest of it, right? And then of course, we'll, we'll talk, uh, give you an view and walk through of various digital initiatives in the field of school education being initiated by NCERT uh, by supporting the government of India. And then uh, we will talk uh, post this initial session, which is set the trend, then we will slowly shift our focus on specific tools and uh, content types. So we will talk about how you can, uh, you can develop uh, interactive contents, how you can develop and graphic resources, what are the utility of graphic resources, what are the types of file formats for graphic resources, where we can get graphic resources available on the internet, can we use just randomly pick up any graphic resource from the web and can you use it or not? So then we will slowly shift our focus on a more interesting and uh, complex development like development animation. So we'll, we'll understand a bit about how, how you develop an animation, how with the help of easily available open source software, how we can develop and create animations and other such content. Then we will have an overview about what are the emerging content types such as augmented reality content, virtual reality content. Right? Then there will be an important session on evaluation of e-content because, because if you go to internet, there are n number of no dark content. But then the challenge is how do you evaluate the content and find it see true? Right? And then the, the very important aspect of content technology and pedagogy integration because Nearly developing or handling e-content is not enough. 
it is important also to find out for which con concept type what kind of e content to be integrated under which pedagogy scenario right so these are all important and then we will also talk about cyber safety and security because the moment you are in enter into cyber world there are threats and concerns related to cyber safety security cyber etiquette data safety data privacy and then we will also also have the sessions on open educational resources as well as free and open source software because uh, uh, things on the internet are copyrighted governed by ipr laws copyright laws right so trademark laws so we just can't go and randomly keep anybody's content in use you have to see whether the content the owner has allowed others to access or modify their content or not whether the owner has allowed views or not if one has allowed you to use this or content you know there's a little bit of restriction like a condition like you have to refer his name or if you have to acknowledge his name that this content was originally developed by this person so this are the kind of concerns that we need to very much understand so that we respect uh, the um, copyrights and we avoid ourselves from plagiarism and uh, other such concerns right so so these are the gamut of activities that we will have sessions that we will have in the uh, under the broad umbrella of e content development right and uh, so I, I look forward to meeting you in another session on interactive e content as well some of the participants are saying that yes. your voice is not clearly audible it was okay. low volume was, was it low. audible to you it is but the volume is low oh, now that i have finished it so i i, I request uh, uh, dr bul uh, dr bul nishan to have a again walk through a brief walk through of the session that we are going to have on this is what i do fine is it fine Sir, would you uh, repeat? Right, sir. I think we can take it. Don't worry, sir. I, I, I was mentioning what I did in this last five seven minutes. I just gave a walkthrough of the sessions. So I'm requesting Dr. Golshan if she can again give since the participants saying they couldn't hear me. If Dr. Golshan, you can have a brief walkthrough of the sessions that we will have probably. So that in the beginning, participants get an idea. What are the areas they are going to in, uh, get an understanding in the name of the content in this five days? All right, Dr. Gulshan, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajol. Now I would like to invite Dr. Monica. Dr. Monica, are you here? Uh, very good morning and namaskar to all the participants. Uh, a very pleasant morning. Uh, I hope uh, this uh, training is going to be a wonderful uh, learning experience to all of you. And uh, some technical glitches are happening due to connectivity at our end or your end. So we will try to uh, see how we can uh, get rid of it and how we can at least attend all our sessions smoothly so that uh, there are no learning hiccups as such in the training. So uh, actually it was uh, time for us to hear Professor Behra, but he is also not able to join. He is also under, I think, a uh, low connectivity area. So he's not able to join the meeting. As soon as he gets into the connectivity area, he will be joining uh, during the session, any of the sessions, and he will uh, uh, give us uh, the vision of this program. He will speak to us about the vision of this program and how as a teacher, uh, we are going to contribute to this program uh, and learn from this program and also take these learnings into our state and implement it for the national cause of education uh, through this program. 
So with this, I will be waiting for uh, Professor Behra whenever he joins in the training. We will be uh, speaking to him. But now uh, we would be moving forward to the formal uh, vote of thanks so that uh, uh, we can actually start the program uh, without any uh, delay. And we are uh, also not uh, missing any of the sessions. Just a second. so that we don't miss any of the sessions and we don't get delayed during any of the uh, sessions. So first of all, uh, I would like to uh, present my thanks to all the esteemed participants who have joined from Northeastern states, starting from Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Tripura, Sikkim, Nagaland, Mizoram, Manipur, Meghalaya. Uh, I welcome all the participants here and I also welcome the participants from Kerala and Lakshadweep. We all welcome you and we will be there with you for all the five days to guide you, support you during the program. After the participants, I would also like to extend my heartiest thanks to all the state authorities who have deputed you. Uh, some of the names also I can take. Kalyan Saha sir, Parthu sir has really supported us for the uh, deputation of Tripura participants at the end moment because we could not establish the connection earlier. Lakshadweep uh, being so in such a difficult place and uh, low internet area, they are able to join. I'm very, very thankful to the authorities as well as participants. Don't worry uh, to all the Lakshadweep team. We will be providing the recordings of all the sessions to you so that even if you miss the session, you are able to access the session and learn from that. So we are there. Don't worry. Just uh, try to be with us during the program. So thanks to all the state authorities of uh, for deputing all the participants for this five days training program, which is a long training program. Then I would uh, extend my heartiest thanks to our head of department, Dr. Bharati Kaushik. She's been a guiding force behind all of us uh, for conducting this um, very useful uh, training program. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would also like to thank my program coordinator, ma'am, uh, Professor Indu Kumar, who is the planner uh, of this program and the execution is also happening through her. Today, she is also not able to join because of an urgent meeting, but she will be joining us in the coming sessions. So thank you very much, ma'am, for all the support and guidance which you provide us during the program and before the program and even after the program. Thank you so much. I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Rizaul Kareem, uh, sir, for the bringing in the overview of the program and being with us for all the support during the program, which is especially on the technical end, because he is there to, uh, in Diksha also is uh, our technical uh, coordinator. So he's always there to resolve all the queries uh, and help us and support us to go ahead with the program smoothly. Thank you very much, sir, for your presence, as well as all your support. Uh, last but not the least, uh, I would like to extend my heartiest thanks to uh, our joint director, Professor Amrinder Prasad Behera. He is not here right now, but he is everywhere because he keeps on asking every minute what is happening in the program. Is it going fine? Are you facing any difficulty? So all these five days or before this also, he'll be always checking on the preparation that we are on the track and we are not missing any link between the program. Also, wherever we find difficulty in contacting the states, he is the one who will just do it so smoothly that we don't face any difficulty with any hiccups. So thank you very much, sir, for your unending support, your vision, your guidance, and uh, the energy which you flow uh, through uh, like into all of us that we can conduct the programs uh, smoothly. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity for all of us to conduct this program, sir. 
And now I would also like to thank my CIET team who are there with uh, us during these sessions, all the resource persons who are going to take the sessions with us. I welcome all, all of them on the board for this particular program. Thank you very much. Don't worry about uh, uh, the sessions and the connectivity, but be uh, with the, us during the program. Be very careful about the registration form, filling up the registration form. Attendance sheet will be shared every uh, twice a day, one before the lunch and one after the lunch. So be very particular about filling your attendance uh, because without attendance, it will be difficult for us to relieve you later after the program. And also rename yourself as the team is suggesting with your state code and your name so that if you by chance due to connectivity issue miss the attendance link, you are able to be uh, identified from your Zoom name. So your state code is very, very important here. Uh, with these words, I thank all of you and I welcome all of you for this uh, very interesting, very hectic and uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, very learnable program to all of you. Uh, welcome all of you. Over to Ms. Nidhi. Thank you, Dr. Monica. Now I would request <clears throat> all the participants to please switch on your video so that we can take a screenshot for uh, social media. And uh, I would request that all of you to please keep your video on throughout the program so that uh, resource person and we can also interact with you directly. It will be great if you will keep it on throughout the workshop. Uh, I request again, please switch on your camera. Switch on your um, video so that we can look at your smiling and excited face. I mean, is it okay? Is it okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ma'am, is it okay now? Yes, sir, it is. I can see that uh, some participants from Tripura, Nagaland, Sikkim have not switched on their video. Please switch on your video from Mizoram Lakshadweep. If you will keep your video on, then the source person will also be get will also get to know whether you have any query, you want to say something. It will be easy for us to read what's on your mind. So, so we would like to keep watching you throughout the program. Thank you so much. Now I would like to request Dr. Gulshan Mufit, who is working as a senior academic consultant at CIAT NCRT. I would request her to orient us, to give us information about various ICT initiators, which are uh, working in India with the special emphasis on Diksha. Over to Dr. Gulshan Mufit. Thank you, Niri, ma'am. And uh, uh, once again, I welcome all the participants from the different uh, states uh, of our Northeast region. So now uh, let me allow to share my PPT first, Niri, ma'am. Just a second, ma'am. 
Uh, I would request Mr. Alok to give co-host rights to Dr. Gulshan so that she can share her screen. Mr. Alok, are you here? Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Gulshan, you are not audible. Uh, Nidhi, ma'am, I'm joining from uh, Dr. Monica's uh, laptop. Okay, just give me a few seconds, please. Sure, ma'am. Uh, Alok, can you please uh, remove the screen share from uh, Dr. Gulshan's system? Till the time Dr. Gulshan is uh, joining, rejoining, I would uh, like to thank all the participants who are keeping their video on. Thank you. Yes, till then, uh, those who have not uh, renamed themselves according to the format given, they can rename themselves because... Uh, uh, Ma'am, you are not audible. Are you speaking? So you can now, now I have switched on my mic, uh, Nidhi. Sorry for the inconvenience. No problem. So uh, we are discussing today uh, the use and integration of technology uh, and digital education. Uh, as Nidhi ma'am has already said, we are, we are going to discuss uh, the use of ICT with special reference to Diksha. Now let's come uh, to the educational scenario in India. What is the present scenario of education in India? In this slide, we are trying to show you. So as you can see, on the left-hand side, we have given a figure here that is 10 million teachers. So in India, we are having 10 million teachers to which we have to provide the continuous professional development. And we are providing this continuous, uh, continuous professional development in the form of Nishtha. Maybe you have heard about this initiative of ours, that is National Initiative for School Heads and Teachers Holistic Advancement. We have trained millions of teachers under this initiative. So it, uh, it was really a great challenge for us uh, to provide the continuous professional development uh, to all the teachers. And presently also, 
we are uh, uh, we are offering many online programs which are available on diksha uh, which you can avail in which you can enroll yourself and uh, uh, professionally you can develop uh, yourself as a teacher so it is a big challenge to train 10 million teachers in india we already have uh, as we know one uh, 1.3 billion people in india 1.5 million schools there uh, in india and 900 plus universities 14000 more than 14000 teacher education institutes and 330 million students so it is really a big challenge to cover all this population and empower them with ict so NEP also focuses on imparting equitable quality education and lifelong learning as a goal for all of us. And as uh, on the right hand side of uh, the PPT, you can see the skill training of youth. Two third population of India consists of the youth. And as per the NEP 2020, it is our goal to train them, uh, to train our youths with some skills. And uh, uh, regarding this skill training, many initiatives have been started. Also, there is a goal which NEP suggests, which NEP focuses that it uh, to bridge the digital divide. We have to offer the digital resources uh, uh, to those areas of the country where uh, it is not very easy to for for them to access the internet for access uh, to access the digital resources it is our responsibility to bridging that digital divide and uh, make all the resources accessible to all those parts of all those remote parts of india where it is not possible right now Moving to our next slide. Yes. It is showing the timeline. Sorry. I hope this slide is visible to you, uh, Nidhi ma'am. Is it? Yes, ma'am, it is. <laughs> So presently it is not in the uh, presentation mode, but uh, if the slide is visible, then uh, we can go ahead. This slide shows uh, the timeline that how ICT uh, is used in India according to the policy directions. So in 1972, we had the ET scheme, the educational technology scheme, and then it progresses uh, in 1983 and we had inset we had class projects in 1984 and in 1986 the national policy of education came into existence after that based on that national policy of education the program of action came uh, into existence in 1992 and in nine, uh, in 2004 the adset uh, which is the ICT at school, uh, this uh, policy, uh, this uh, initiative came into existence. Uh, so this uh, slide is showing how ICT progresses according to the policy directions. So in nine, uh, 2010, again, the revised ICT at school and ICT awards came into uh, existence. And uh, in 2012, uh, the ICT policy came and we had uh, one of our uh, major initiative that is uh, National Repository of Open and Educational Resources, the NRE we are in, uh, started in 2013. And uh, the another initiative, ICT curriculum, uh, which uh, you may be uh, familiar of, that also uh, started in uh, to, uh, 2013. And in 2015, uh, the Digital India e Shala and EPG Shala it started uh, uh, in 2015. In 2017, uh, we started the Swam MOOCs, Swam Prabha DTA channels and Diksha. 
so as uh, you must be knowing that the MOOCs uh, are the massive open online courses uh, in which anyone can enroll themselves and uh, get certified uh, certification of that course. In 2018, Samag Shiksha came into existence, cyber safety and security guidelines. Uh, we have many uh, cyber safety and uh, security guidelines also, which started in 2018. In 2019, uh, the Nishtha came into existence. We have started uh, the Nishtha as an, a major initiative of uh, NCERT, and uh, we started uh, training many uh, teachers and school heads under this initiative. And guidelines for e-content development uh, also developed in 2019. And uh, these guidelines uh, you can also access uh, through our uh, NCRT website. It is there. Uh, and in 2020, the NEP 2020 came into existence. Uh, the National Educational Technology for, uh, Forum, uh, the Pragyata guidelines, which are the guidelines for digital education, PM Evidya, uh, NDR and uh, Vidya Saviksha Kendra, uh, VSK, it started in 2020. So the previous slide uh, is about how the ICT progressed uh, since 1972 till 2022 and still it uh, is uh, going on. So these are the so, uh, these are some recommendations uh, for online and digital education, which National Education Policy 2020 focuses upon, which is uh, building digital competencies of students, content, pedagogy, technology integration. Uh, under this, uh, uh, you must be knowing that every teacher must be technologically equipped. Every uh, teacher must include technology into his or her pedagogy and into his or her content. What, uh, whatever content you are teaching, it should be uh, equipped with uh, technology so that whatever you are teaching, the concept you are teaching to your students, it uh, uh, you could deliver it into a very interesting manner. Next one is capacity of teachers and teacher educators. Under this, uh, uh, every teacher, uh, NEP focuses on the continuous professional development and capacity building of the teachers and teacher educators, laying down standards, intensive research in ET, obviously and NEP because um, uh, we are living in the digital era and uh, in uh, our teaching learning process, we are including the technology, then uh, keeping in this, uh, uh, keeping in, uh, in this way, the NEP also focuses on the intensive research in the field of educational technology. As a teacher, you have to do small researches uh, in this area. Then if we move ahead, uh, it also focuses on the online assessment and examinations, e-governance, telecast and broadcast, digital resources. The teachers must be involved in uh, developing the digital resources uh, using various ICT tools. And uh, our this uh, training, state resource group, uh, group training is also focuses on uh, the development of e-content. Uh, next one is portal apps and tools. The NEP focuses on the use of various digital portals such as Diksha, uh, the applications and the tools so that the technology, uh, the teachers could become technology friendly. It also focuses on the development of digital infrastructure. Uh, as you know, Diksha, Diksha is one of that digital infrastructure where uh, uh, we have all type of e-contents, we have all type of e-resources. And uh, also we, we can say that uh, Diksha is a full-fledged, Diksha has a full-fledged digital infrastructure, uh, which provides every type of content 
uh, which is required in the field of teaching and learning. So moving ahead. Let's discuss about the variety of digital contents. What are the different forms of digital contents? It could be energized textbooks. We often uh, call it ETBs. And why do we call them energized? Because uh, every energized textbooks consists of a QR code. And you can access that energized textbook by scanning the QR code. And uh, this is the ma major difference between a uh, textbook and energized textbook that in energized textbooks, a QR code must be there. So uh, digital content could be in the form of e-courses. It could be interactive and immersive content. Digital content could be assessment questions. If you are conducting uh, examination and assessment in an online format, then you have to develop that assessment uh, digitally. And uh, you can also use the gamified type of uh, assessment. So uh, assessment question, developing assessment questions uh, is also a type of digital content if you are using technology. Guidelines and handbooks, audios, talking books, Audiobooks, infographics, uh, let's discuss uh, some about uh, the audiobooks. Uh, could anyone uh, tell uh, what is the difference between a talking book and audiobook? You can write your response in the chat box. We can take that responses after this slide. So digital content could be infographic uh, and infographic uh, is a type of content where you are providing information in a graphical format. Videos and videos in uh, Indian sign languages, it is also a type of uh, digital content which uh, uh, anyone could develop. Worksheets. So the major digital initiatives of ours is the PM e Vidya. Under this PM e Vidya initiative, we are having 12 DTH channels, uh, one channel dedicated to one class and on each channel, the content is being uh, broadcasted and telecasted uh, on each channel from class one to 12. Another major initiative is Diksha, that is Digital Infrastructure for Knowledge Sharing. And it is also popularly known as uh, One Nation, One Digital Platform. Then e -Parchala, in e -Parchala, uh, in e -Parchala, we are having textbooks and EPUBs under Nishcha, we are providing the continuous professional development to teachers in the form of e-courses and SWAM. The MOOCs courses run on, uh, on the SWAM platform. And another initiative is ICT curriculum. The previous slide, yes, sure. This one. Okay, so uh, sir was asking to see the previous slide. So I hope uh, you were talking about this slide. So as we, I've just uh, told that a PME Vidya, it is uh, about the 12 channels, 12 DTA channels uh, we are offering and uh, one channel for one class.
and the same content is also uh, broadcasted on our community radio stations uh, and the same content you can also access on Diksha, which is known as One Nation, One Digital Platform. Uh, and uh, under PME Vidya, we also uh, uh, telecast the special uh, e-content uh, for Divyang and uh, CWSN. Uh, the online courses for school educations, it, is, it also comes under the PME Vidya. And PME Vidya focuses on the unification of efforts and enabling multi-mode access to education. On our 12 uh, DTH channels, the telecast is uh, uh, on the 24 into 7 basis and, uh, and also simulcasted on a Geo TV app private cable operators, YouTube channels, etc. Until now, there are 6,300 curriculum-based videos developed for school education in English, Hindi, including Indian Sign Language, including the vocational education. And also one hour live session for each class for clarifications of doubts. Also, uh, we telecasted uh, one hour live session where uh, the students can clarify their doubts. We also offer the IP, uh, IVRS uh, support for addressing queries of students. So if anyone uh, having uh, any student or any teacher having any query regarding the programs we discuss, they can ask those queries through our IVRS support system. Because we are talking about the coherence and uh, uh, access of digital content in the multi-mode uh, form, uh, the radio is another uh, form where uh, students and teachers can uh, access uh, our programs. Uh, till now, there are 3,688 pieces of curriculum-based radio programs uh, from class 1 to 12. And also broad, broadcast on 398 radio stations, uh, where 11 are Gyanwani FM radio stations, and there are 255 community radio stations, and 132 All India radio stations. Also, uh, we have iRadio, and uh, you, uh, students can also listen to these programs on the Geo Savan mobile apps. And 1,881 live programs podcasted on iRadio till date. So let's talk about Diksha. Diksha has presently more than uh, 6,000 energized textbooks that is being developed by states and UTs. And more than 3 lakh e-content is available on Diksha. More than 8,000, uh, this data is uh, a week uh, old. That's why I'm uh, just uh, uh, telling you the latest data. Uh, more than 8,000 courses are available on Diksha. Five, 50 million page hits on daily basis. And it supports 30, more than 32 languages included uh, 22 scheduled languages and also Indian Sign Language. We are also having uh, one, five uh, dedicated verticals on Diksha. Uh, first one is foundation literacy and numeracy vertical. The another one is for adult education, which is now renamed as education for all vertical. And the next one is vocational education, the virtual lab, and uh, 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 vertical for uh, children with special needs is, is uh, also uh, in progress. It will come in few months. It will be visible in a few months. So uh, we are having these much verticals where you can access a uh, number of uh, uh, e-content on each vertical uh, related to the particular, vert uh, per particular vertical. On our virtual lab vertical, we are having more than 200 plus virtual labs. And these virtual labs are of languages, 
uh, you can uh, uh, have the experiments of uh, mathematics and science and as the name says virtual labs you can actually do the experiments available on this vertical of diksha we have number of simulations uh, there related to mathematics science and languages on the foundation literacy and numeracy vertical we are having resources related to uh, the foundational level of uh, education that is uh, preschool 1 to class 3 this is the another vertical of diksha that is education for all and under this uh, vertical you can avail uh, you can access the digital content related to digital literacy critical life skills etc there are many more areas uh, under this education for all vertical where you can access uh, digital resources so this one is a major project which uh, we have recently started the micro improvement project under this micro improvement project uh, a, a big a program has been started which is also known as the vidya amrit mahotsav you must or you all must be familiar of this and you are already working on this vidya amrit mahotsav and under vidya amrit mahotsav each teacher has to develop uh, a, a video on uh, on a innovative pedagogy which you are using in your classroom and you have to uh, contribute that innovative pedagogy program to uh, diksha so all the states uh, were oriented uh, for this Vidya Amrit Mahotsav and you all are working uh, uh, on this. Again on Diksha, there are building blocks uh, which were used for multiple use cases. Uh, we have discussed the energized steps, but these are the building blocks uh, which are there on Diksha. We have teacher professional development programs there on Diksha, question banks, quizzes are there uh, also on Diksha. We offer quiz, many quizzes uh, on Diksha platform, the content authoring, uh, the data tools and dashboards, the chatbot features is also there on Diksha. Uh, the C cube is all uh, another feature of Diksha. Uh, you can do the surveys there uh, also uh, on this platform, and the language translation tools are also available where you can uh, translate uh, the language provided on the platform in the in your <clears throat> uh, uh, in the convenient language which you want to listen uh, listen to. Then the collaboration is also a building block there on Diksha. So, digital, this term uh, is a combination of two terms that is physical plus digital. We are converting the physical content into the digital content. Uh, as uh, in the previous slide, I have said that uh, there is one major difference between a textbook and an energized textbook that there uh, the QR is present on the energized textbook, whereas in the physical textbooks is uh, the QR code is not there usually. So uh, the digital terms means that converting each and every resources by adding by embedding QR code and converting it into the digital resource. Diksha also have e-content based on universal design of learning. If you have explored Diksha well, you must have explored uh, the videos which are in the sign language. Uh, for each chapter, uh, we have content based on UDL on Diksha.
So if we are uh, talking about the coherent axis, the coherent axis means that each resource uh, which is available on one device, it could be, it should be available on the another device also. So if uh, here in this picture, we are trying to show that if uh, a child is watching a program based on a chapter on a television, then by scanning the QR code, which is uh, available in on the television screen, another child can avail the same resource on the mobile device. So uh, the same content can be accessed on two or more than two device, devices by accessing the QR code that is called the coherent access. Recently, NCRT has launched Vidya Samiksha Kendra and it consists of the Nishtha data. Uh, it, uh, the Vidya Samiksha Kendra is uh, all about uh, the data we access uh, for Nishtha. Diksha, Micro Improvements, PM Potion, NAS, UDICE, PGI, Nipun Bharat, Quizzes, NCF, and we can access data from, uh, we can take data from all the states and UTs under uh, this Vidya Samiksha Kendra. We have also recently launched the experiential lab, which uh, we have named as Pragyan Kendra. Uh, in this, uh, we give the uh, augmented reality and virtual reality ex experience to the users. As you can see in the pictures, picture this provi uh, provided here, the user is uh, are enjoying the content by watching it in the uh, this AR glasses. So we provide uh, this augmented reality and virtual real, uh, reality experience to the users under this experiential lab. And we have number of content uh, also uh, present in our experiential lab. So how we are providing the continuous professional development we are giving it in the form of Nishtha. We are also providing online courses for continuous development, which are there on Diksha. There are many MOOCs course for school educations, uh, which are available for students. And also the online capacity building uh, on education technology and uh, information and communication technology. And this online capacity building uh, we are providing through our webinars, which we normally, uh, which we uh, always have uh, on daily basis from 4 to 5 p.m. or our, on our NCRT YouTube official channel. So here in this slide, uh, we are showing how Nishtha progresses. Initially, we have started Nishtha which later on named as Nishtha 1.0 and it was for the elementary uh, level. And uh, under Nishtha 1.0, there were 18 courses in which uh, 18 states, uh, uh, UTs and seven autonomous organizations under MOE and MOD uh, were involved. And uh, these uh, courses uh, were available in 11 languages, that is uh, Assamese, Bengali, Bodo, English, Kannada, Hindi, Telugu, Odia, Gujarati, Punjabi, and Urdu. Later on, uh, we have started Nishtha 2.0, uh, that is uh, for secondary level. Under Nishtha 2.0, 12 courses were there. And Nishtha 3.0, it is uh, also known as Nishtha FLN. The Nishtha 3.0 is Nishtha FLN. Uh, we, we can call it Nipun Bharat also and it, un, under Nishtha 3.0 there are there were 12 courses and recently uh, we have launched uh, Nishtha 4.0 that is uh, Nishtha ECCE early childhood care and education here is a, a little uh, uh, writing mistake the Nishtha 4.0 is Nishtha ECCE and Nishtha 3.0 is Nishtha FLN. Okay, so uh, Nishtha uh, 4.0, it was launched in July to, uh, 2022 and it is for uh, 
early childhood care education. Regarding the continuous professional development on Diksha, we are having cyber hygiene practices, personal digital device. We are having many courses uh, that is uh, related to cyber hygiene. We also offer uh, 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 program uh, courses related to uh, environmental protection. Uh, we also offered uh, courses on COVID-19 responsive behavior in collaboration with UNICEF. And we also uh, we are also having courses on action research uh, for teachers. Uh, there are courses on Urdu language script writing, and there is another course Cash Darin. It is also with the collaboration of uh, UNICEF. Under MOOCs for school education uh, on SWIM. Uh, there are more than 3 lakh beneficiaries, 28 online courses, 11 subjects of class 11 and 12, and it is being offered in 10 cycles. So this is uh, the ICT curriculum is another initiative of NCERT. And the themes under this ICT curriculum uh, initiative is programming, graphics, data processing and representation, subject specific tools, internet and ICT environment, audio video communication, under online capacity building and uh, on ECT and ICT. Uh, I have just told that we, uh, we offer uh, the uh, we uh, offer the webinars and uh, till now, uh, there are more than uh, 700 webinars uh, offered on our NCRT official YouTube channels uh, uh, and more than 1,5,000 beneficiaries uh, are there and 16 online trainings are there. We also offer uh, the programs uh, for uh, cyber security, uh, cyber parenting, cyber hygiene practices, social engineering attacks, uh, digital infrastructure for school education, OERs, development of game-based e-contents, artificial intelligence for education, stay safe in the cyber world, innovative pedagogies for digital education, the digital tools for teaching, learning, and assessment for sub uh, subject-specific. Uh, financial safety and cyberspace, mental and emotional well-being in the era of cyberspace. So ePartiala is uh, another major initiative of uh, NCERT. And here uh, we have shown uh, the visitors of this uh, ePartiala app and the users uh, who are using our ePartiala app and the rating of this app. This is the branding of ePartiala. We have many apps under this ePartiala uh, initiative. Number one, first one is of uh, first one is the app of ePartiala. E Another one is the app of Nishta, and the third one is augmented reality app of NCERT. The next one is uh, Parak, the National Achievement Survey, the NAS app. Uh, the next one is SSP Mauritius app, uh, the e partiala scanner. We have our own e partiala scanner also. The last one, uh, the second last one is NCF uh, app. And the last one is the Precious app. We have also developed many standards and guidelines for digital educations like. Pragyata. It is a guideline for digital education, uh, uh, the guideline for the development of e-content for children with disabilities, the guideline for development of e-content for school and teacher education, the PRIA, the accessibility warrior, it is also a guideline and these guidelines you can 
um, uh, access that you can see on our NCERT website. All guidelines are there. There are other cyber safety guidelines also, which are available in English and Hindi languages. And on these guidelines, we have developed our uh, the bookmarks and uh, the uh, pamphlets also. Regarding the international collaboration, uh, we have trained master trainers of Mauritius on developing and dissemination uh, open educational resources and also developed a portal and mobile app for them. The school online program collaboration between India and Israel schools, it is uh, another collaboration between Indian and Israel uh, schools, which is known as Mashav. Then another collaboration is uh, uh, with Nepal, uh, in which we train master trainers of Nepal on developing and disseminating e-content and uh, OER. And another collaboration is uh, with Korean schools. Uh, uh, the, it is also, uh, uh, we have collaborated uh, the Indian schools with Korean schools under the collaboration and uh, we have shared the e-content uh, developed by the NCERT. The another uh, initiatives of NCERT are the Sahyog DTS support for telecounseling services. The uh, we also offer the ICT awards for teachers for their best practices in the field of education, and this uh, award is. Uh, offered to teachers and teachers educators. Uh, the next one uh, is e-content development uh, competition and ICT fair. Uh, online quizzes and competitions. The another initiative is talk to NCRT. That is the voice assistant of uh, NCRT, and we also uh, we also are having uh, the IVRS. Uh, Base 24 into 7 counseling support, uh, which is known as the Manudarpan. So if uh, anyone having a need, uh, if anyone is in the need of counseling, uh, any student or any teacher wants to contact uh, for their teachers, uh, sorry, if any teacher wants to contact uh, regarding their students and provides, wants to provide counseling to him or her, they can contact on I, our IVRS number and this you can take on our website. So here, this slides provides a summary of all our in ICT initiatives. You can have a look on it. We have already discussed all these in the previous slides. These initiatives are the television, which we have discussed, the PME Vidya scheme, uh, in which we have we are having 12 DTH channels. The Swam School MOOCs, the radio and uh, uh, radio and podcast, Indian Sign Language content, Diksha, our YouTube channel, ICT in education curriculum, ARVR and O Labs, Nishtha, E Partshala. And we are glad to share with you that uh, recently NCERT has won the most prestigious, the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize. Uh, and uh, it is being received by our uh, esteemed joint director, uh, Professor Amrinder Behra. Uh, and it is really, uh, it was really a very proud moment for us. Uh, to receive this initiative and uh, the project for which we have received this award uh, was in our initiatives for inclusive and accessible education. 
So these uh, are some uh, initiatives of uh, uh, NCRT, which uh, I have tried to share with you. So thanks to again, uh, thanks to all once again for the patient listening. And if you are having any question, uh, you can ask by raising your hand. Thank you. There are some questions uh, already asked in the chat box. I would like to take them. Uh, can we get curriculum-based videos on science and mathematics? Ah, yes. Can we get curriculum-based videos on science and mathematics? Yes, uh, I think you can uh, watch those videos on Diksha portal and if uh, uh, the another source on, on which you can see these curriculum videos or our uh, DTH channels, we, uh, which we have, uh, I, I just have told you that uh, we are having our uh, 12 channels and these curriculum based videos, we uh, telecast there time to time as per the schedule of that class. <laughs> If anyone else wants to ask any question, the participant can raise hand or can write in the chat box. Ah, uh, yes, I'll video in your sign language. Uh, there is another question, ma'am. Sometimes in the energized textbook, the QR code is unresponsive. Why does it happen? <coughs> So if the QR code has been embedded proper, properly, it could it would be responsive. You when the person uh, that I mean you have you have to check the QR code. It is being embedded properly or not. Will there be resources in local languages? Uh, the resource in local languages that could be available in, in your particular state tenant. The states are working on this. Uh, they are contacting us on uh, uploading the local uh, uh, the resources in the local languages and uh, some states have worked already worked on this. So uh, you can avail uh, this in the local resources in their state tenant only. Are there any other questions? Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gulshan Mofeet for uh, giving us uh, such valuable information regarding various initiatives. Now I would like to inform all of you that we are going to have a break till 1140.